So I am just doing this on the fly. I did not um, schedule this live. And oh, I'm a little, hold on, fix that. I'm take off my head. Anyway, so I'm just going to kind of wing it. Um, sorry, I've got my earbuds hanging around my neck. I just wanted to pop on with all the Christmas stuff. Today, I have a lot of prep work to be done for my holiday orders, for my orders that are due this weekend. Um, and I guess I get asked that a lot. Like, how can you possibly do it all in 24 hours? Well, I don't do it all in 24 hours. <laughs> so if you were ordering like the candy and the decorative cookies that a lot of people get for the holidays, that's always gonna be something you can prep ahead of time. So for instance, today I have to make bourbon ball dough. Am I actually rolling and dipping those today? No, but I am making the dough today because my bourbon ball dough is very soft and it actually does better if it sits in the refrigerator wrapped in plastic wrap for about 24 to 48 hours. So I have an easier time rolling it out into the, the balls before I dip them if I do it that way. And so, and it saves me time. And another key to candy like that, like the Buckeye dough, the bourbon ball dough, you can also freeze that before you dip it. So like if you wanted to make all the dough ahead of time and then wrap it in plastic wrap and freeze it, and then take it out of the freezer a couple days before you're gonna roll it and dip it, you just put it in the refrigerator so it comes back to, to room temperature or thaws out at a slow pace, you can still do that. Now you're gonna have condensation on it, um, so you will want that to like kind of dry out a little bit because you don't want to dip those in your melting chocolate if there's condensation because that'll mess up the way the chocolate kind of hardens on top. Anyway, so um, there's a lot of things you can do ahead of time. Cookie dough can be made ahead of time. Um, like my decorative cookie dough that I use for the sugar cookies that I decorate, um, the recipe that I originally started with, um, and I've changed it probably three times over the years, but the one I originally started with said to refrigerate it for three hours wrapped in plastic wrap before rolling it out. I actually do overnight now um, because it actually rolls out and gives me a better shape if it's really cold. Um, now you can freeze it. I normally don't. I normally just make it a few days ahead of time roll it out, bake it, and decorate it and you know, in time for the order to be picked up. But you could either freeze the dough itself before it's cut out. Um, if you're really looking for a time saver, you could roll out the cookie dough and freeze it in those shapes, but do not bake it yet. Um, that way you're still getting a fresh baked cookie to decorate. Um, and I do most of my cookie dough that way around the holidays when I'm making those large trays and platters. Um, like the chocolate chip and oatmeal raisin and ginger and all that stuff. I make the cookie dough ahead of time. I do let it rest in the refrigerator for a few hours and then I scoop it, roll it, whatever you're going to do. I usually use an ice cream scoop. You can get different sizes, so kind of play around with the size that you like. And I scoop it onto trays that are lined in wax paper and then I put those trays in the freezer, like just like just as they are, for probably two hours so that the cookie dough really hardens. And then I toss it all into a Ziploc bag, a freezer safe bag, um, until I'm ready to bake it. And then I just take out as many as I might need for that particular order, bake them fresh that morning, let them cool, put them on the tray, and they're out the door. So all the time savers. So today I'm making bourbon ball dough, I'm making gingerbread uh, cookie dough, I'm making sugar cookie dough. I'm also going to be making some boozed pecans. Um, I have some already made up for my bourbon ball dough, but I also have an order this weekend for a bourbon pecan groom's cake. And I like to soak my chopped pecans in the bourbon uh, for at least 24 hours, but you could do it for two weeks if you wanted to, as long as it's in a sealed container. And you don't need to refrigerate that. You, the alcohol will keep it from going bad. Just let it sit in your pantry with a tight lid on it. And the pecans will soak up all the alcohol and all the bourbon flavor. Um, and I use that as my liquid um, in my cake recipe for my bourbon pecan cake. So it's a really strong bourbon and cake. <laughs> but anyway, I did it for both the bourbon balls and for the bourbon cake. And so I would recommend if you're ever doing any kind of bourbon pecan anything to let the pecan soak in your bourbon or rum or whatever it is you're using. So I've got to do that today. Um, I'm also going to be... Um, making my buttercream, which if you know me personally, I hate making icing. <laughs> and you would think that after all these years, I wouldn't hate it, but I still do. So I have my butter softening. I've got it just sitting at room temperature. I have, it's already been back there. I have my big 20 quart mixer in my utility room. So the mess when I make icing stays in there, not my kitchen. 
So um, I let my butter sit out as long as possible, even overnight if I have time. Um, but you want it to be soft, not melted. So you can speed the process up by putting your butter like on defrost or whatever, or just for a few seconds in the microwave, but you do risk melting part of your butter when you do it that way. Um, and for anybody who, if you, any baking you do or making icing, you want unsalted butter. Do not use salted butter. There is no reason to have the extra salt in there. Now this is of course four pounds because this is what I buy at Sam's. I buy it in these large quantities. Um, but if you're doing a lot of baking and you have a Sam's or a Costco membership, I would recommend doing this. Now this, these are just in solid blocks. These are not separated out in sticks. So for icing, that's totally fine because I'm adding it by the pound, but I also buy the unsalted butter by the stick at Sam's, and I'm sure Costco has it too, because this is what I use for cookie dough, because sometimes I just need six sticks. I don't need it, you know, by the pound necessarily. Heather and Sue, oh, thank you for joining me. I'm um, glad to have you here. But um, so those are the things that I always do ahead of time that you can do ahead of time. Um, baking cakes ahead of time can be done, but it's a different process. I'm going to be more careful about it. Um, I do not like cakes that have been frozen for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, I do occasionally freeze them for two to three days uh, to prep for the weekend if I have a ton of cake to do. I don't think I'm going to have to do it this week, which is fantastic. Um, and I also wanted to talk to you a little bit about tools and certain ingredients that are better than others. And so um, if you're looking for a mixer, I'm a very firm believer in the KitchenAid brand. I know there are other brands out there, but these are my babies, and I have like four of them. Now, I purchased the six quart mixers because I do such large um, batches of cookie dough and of um, cake batter. But I, like I said, I've got a 20 quart <laughs> mixer that sits on the floor um, that is just for icing. Because if I was to make all my icing in these, I'd have to make like 12 batches in this thing. It would take forever. So, but if you are looking for a mixer, KitchenAid is fantastic. And actually, I'm kind of um, a KitchenAid fanatic because I have double ovens and my microwave are all KitchenAid. <laughs> I love them. So, um, and also another another tip, unless you are beating egg whites or maybe a, making angel food cake or um, just sifting some dry ingredients together, always use your paddle attachment, cookie dough and cake batter. I know a lot of people that like the whisk attachment for the cake batter. But even though you want cake to be light and fluffy and moist, you do not want a bunch of air bubbles in it. And beating it too long with a whisk attachment can do that. Now, I know people that start with a whisk attachment as they're adding their dry ingredients in, and they use that whisk attachment before the wet ingredients get added to kind of break up and mix all the dry ingredients instead of sifting it beforehand. I think that's perfectly fine. But once you start adding your wet ingredients, I really recommend going over to the pile attachment and definitely if you're making an icing pal attachment, you do not want air bubbles in your icing unless you are making a whipped icing and you don't care about the air bubbles. But most people like myself who want to get the smooth finish on their cake um, with the icing do not want air bubbles and paddle attachment is the way to go. Um, I also recommend if you are an avid baker or you are considering becoming a baker, cake decorator, whatever, to get more than one of these. When you buy a mixer, whether it's KitchenAid or not, it should come with one of these. It should come with a whisk attachment. It should also come with a dough hook. And if you make breads or cinnamon rolls or yeast rolls, then you're, you're gonna need the dough hook. But you will wash this 1,000 times <laughs> during Christmas if you only have one. So it's embarrassing how many I have. I won't even, I won't even go there. But um, I would recommend getting an extra one and that way you can kind of wash them back and forth along with the bowls that come with these. You can always buy extra. You can go to the website of whatever brand um, mixer you have and get the extra pieces. So you don't have to buy another mixer to get all those pieces. So that's just what I would advise. As far as measuring stuff. So like, and I mean, when I say measuring, I mean liquid measuring. So this is your classic Pyrex glass measuring cup. They're handy, they're wonderful, I love them. I use these for melting if I have to melt butter, if I have to melt chocolate. Um, this, is what, this is what I use for most of those things. However, after years of baking and decorating, and my mother who helps me bake can, can second this, our hands and wrists very much ache from the weight of the mixing bowl, like picking it up. And for me, making icing and decorating makes it twice as bad. So we have switched, mom and I, to these plastic ones. Now, the thing is you can't really put these in the microwave it's not really great for the microwave. So, because they'll be cracked and whatever. 
But when you're measuring out your buttermilk or your oil or your molasses or your whatever you're using, these are fantastic. So I keep the, the glass ones from melting things and I try to use the plastic ones as much as possible just to make it easier on my hands. So that's what I would recommend if you care at all about that or you feel like you've already got some issues with your hands or from we're all on our phones all the time and we don't want to make our hands worse. Um, the plastic ones really are handy and makes your life a little bit easier. Um, I also want to touch a little bit more on the, on the ingredients side. We talked about the butter. Um, if you're looking for more of an intense vanilla flavor, um, you know, when you buy vanilla, you can buy the imitation extracts, you can buy the real steel, or you can buy vanilla bean paste. And this is a pure vanilla bean. So when, I, when you order a cake from me, I, you, if you ask for a vanilla bean, you're obviously getting the vanilla bean paste. Um, it's very potent. It's delicious. It comes in these little small glass containers. I order, up, I order it off of Amazon. Um, this is the H-E-I-L-A-L-A -L -A brand. I don't know how you say it, but that's what I get. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of other brands. You don't have to get this brand. You can check on Amazon as long as you just check to make sure it has good reviews and that it is pure vanilla extract. It's not imitation in here. Um, the, the real stuff, you don't have to get McCormick brand. There's Tones, T-O-N-E apostrophe S is another brand that has the pure vanilla extract. Also, you can get on Amazon. It's fantastic. It's going to be pricey. Vanilla, pure vanilla is really expensive. However, I will not use anything else in my buttercream. It has to be the real stuff. So this is what I use for all my icing. For anything that is not going to be baked, I recommend using the pure vanilla. Now, if you are baking a cake or a pound cake or cookies, use the imitation. Let me turn around this way. Um, if you're baking it, I can't tell a difference. And I've tried. I cannot tell a difference. But if I'm making icing or a glaze or some sort of candy that's not being cooked out, I use the pure stuff. I want the real stuff. So that's just my word of advice. You do whatever you want to do. But this stuff is really expensive, and this will save you a huge amount in cost um, if you're just going to be baking it anyway. Another thing, this time of year I use a lot of ginger. Um, I have my gingerbread cookies that I make a lot of, and then an actual, and then I do a, a chocolate ginger crackle cookie, and they both need a lot of ginger. And I like fresh ginger; it gives a different taste. I like to beat it into the butter before I add my other ingredients. However, you know, you gotta like peel it or whatever, or chop it, whatever. So I have been using this lately. The, this is like a stir-in ginger paste. It's just fresh ginger chopped up. Um, and it, this one is good. I just bought this last week, and it's good until February of 2021. So this will get me through the holidays. And this will last a long time. I know for my gingerbread, I'm only going to put a couple teaspoons of this in there. So this is potent. It's strong. I like ginger in my, uh, I make a shake a couple times a week for myself in the middle of the day instead of eating lunch. If I'm really busy, I can, it's easier to drink a shake. And I put ginger in my shake. It's really good for you. So I love this. It is fantastic. If any of you um, don't want to deal with the whole ginger thing, this this is wonderful. And you could freeze this. I wouldn't freeze it like this, but if you get to the end of the holiday season and you still have half a bottle left, um, I would recommend getting like an ice cube tray or something like that and just squirting a little bit in each tray, like a teaspoon's amount or whatever. And then you have it when you just need two teaspoons of ginger. There it is. So that's what I would recommend. Um, another thing, if you are baking, if you need any kind of dairy, whether it's milk or sour cream or whatever, use the real stuff, okay? You want full fat. I use sour cream and everything. So I buy this in bulk. It's in my cake. It's in my cookie dough. I adore it. So sour cream, full fat. It does not have to be Daisy brand, but you want the real stuff. Same thing with your butter. You want unsalted real butter, not margarine. I hope no one's baking with margarine, but if you are, stop. And um, if you're using milk, you want whole milk. If you're making, if you're using buttermilk, you want, well, buttermilk. I don't think there's like a 2% buttermilk. Oh, and another thing about buttermilk, a lot of the times it's expensive to buy. It goes bad before you can use it all. So what I tend to do, because I use buttermilk in my cakes as well, what I tend to do is I make my own a lot of the time. So I get a whole milk and I measure out, like if it's for one cup of, one cup of buttermilk in your recipe, then you measure out one cup of whole milk and you add either just plain white vinegar or lemon juice. Now, I usually do lemon juice just because I always have it in my fridge. You can do either or. I know my mom, when she's here helping me bake, prefers the vinegar. She says it makes the buttermilk a little faster, like you don't have to wait. Um, but it's the acidity that does it. So, like, if you were going to do a cup 
of milk, you're gonna put about a teaspoon of lemon juice or vinegar in there, stir it around, let it sit for a good five minutes because it, you'll see it start to thicken up and it's not gonna look delicious, but it's buttermilk, so. But it's perfect for baking. Um, it still gives you that thick, fatty milk that you want and, and really will make your cake and whatever else you're using in really good. So, oh, and what, one last thing. If you are buying molasses, this is the best molasses. I hope everybody knows that. The Grandma's Unsulfured Original Molasses. Fantastic. My grandfather could just eat this on biscuits. I don't know how. I, can, I love molasses in my cookies, but I don't want to just eat it by itself. But this stuff is fantastic. I use it in barbecue sauce when I'm making my own barbecue sauce. I use it on a sauce that I put on top of my meatloaf, and I use it in all of my gingerbread, man. I love, love, love it. So, um, these are all just some really quick things, like holiday baking things that I wanted to kind of tell you that I consider must-haves, all these ingredients and all these different tools that I just have to have when I'm as much baking and decorating as I'm doing. Um, if you are in need of new recipes for the holidays, um, I have an upcoming Zoom class. It'll be about an hour and a half long on the 16th, on December 16th. It's in the evening, so if you have to work, don't worry. Um, and we're going to be making cinnamon scones. We're going to be making buckeye candies, and we're going to be making sugar cookies. Um, so you'll get all the recipes for those three items. You'll get an hour and a half class with me where I will be making those things and walking you through those and answering your questions. Um, it is a Zoom class, but you won't be on camera. It'll just be me, but you will be able to type into the live chat any questions you have as I'm going along. It is also being recorded. So if you can't make it to the class, but you want to be a part of it, you can still sign up for the class. And the day after I hold the class, I will be sending out the recorded version to everyone who signed up for the class. So if you're there or not, you will get a recorded version of the full class. Um, because some people, they want to attend the class to ask their questions, but they don't necessarily want to stand there and follow along. It's really hard to follow along with me because I've got all my stuff ready to go. I've done this a thousand times, so I'm going to go through it faster than you probably would at home. So it is good to be there to ask those questions, but then it's also good to have the recorded version. So when you actually go to make it the week of Christmas, you can have my video right there to, to be able to watch and answer all your questions that you have coming up. So if you're interested in that, you can comment on this video. You can send me a Facebook message. You can email me, and I'll get you signed up. It's December 16th. Um, but anyway, so I hope all this was helpful to you. I hope that if you all are baking for the holidays that you have tons of people that are going to be enjoying it, whether you're making little candies for your mailman and for your banker and your vet and whoever else, or whether you're just making it for your family and friends or just yourself. Um, I hope that a few of these tips helped. If you have any questions about the things that I've talked about today, please comment below. Let me know. I'll be glad to answer your questions. Um, but I'm going to be in the kitchen late tonight, probably until Christmas Day. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, Heather and Sue, I hope that I answered some of your all's questions that you have. I know that both of you are probably well adept in the kitchen. But let me know if you have any questions. Um, I will be trying to do more lives as we get closer to Christmas because um, I'll be so busy in the kitchen. I'll just pop on when I can. But please let me know if you have any questions. If you're interested in the Christmas Zoom class, let me know. I apologize for the noise. My dog is um, bugging me to play with him. So ignore him. And you can probably hear him growling at me. Um, but anyway, I'll pop off here. Thanks for watching. I hope everybody has a good afternoon.